this video, we will be discussing analyzing and interpreting data, focusing on measures of center. By the end of this video, you will be able to calculate the mean, the median, and the mode of a data set. So the measure of center is a way of summarizing the data by providing a central point of data. It tells you how the data is clustered or where the center of the graph of data is located. Let's take a look at these. So the first one we're going to look at is the mode. The mode is a measure of center where the number appears most often in the data set. To find the mode, it is best to put the numbers in order from least to greatest and count how many of each number there is. And the number that appears most often is the mode. So for example, I have this data set, and if I put it in order from least to greatest, it looks like this. And when I look at this group of numbers, it appears that six happens three times, which is the most out of all of those numbers. And so my mode is six. If there is no mode, do not put zero for the mode. This could represent a point in your data and that could cause some issues. So instead, put there is no mode or no mode found or something like that. If I take a look at some data sets to find the mode, my first one is here and I order it from least to greatest and I have this. Um, so I look here and it looks like 19 is the most occurring number in here. And so 19 is my mode. When I look at my next data set, it looks like it's already in order from least to greatest. And so I just want to find the numbers that show up most often. And I've got a group of threes here that show up three times. And I have a group of sixes here that show up three times. So in this case, I have a mode of three and I have a mode of six. In the last group here, again, already in order from least to greatest, each number just shows up one time. And so I actually have no mode in this data set. So I'm going to put no mode. Now let's take a look at the mean. The mean is the measure of center in which the average of the data is taken. The mean can be thought of as determining a kind of fair share type situation where everybody is getting the same amount. To find the mean, first I'm going to find the sum of all of the data points. So when I take these data points and I add them up, I come up with 163. And second, I divide by the number of data points in the data set. So when I count up how many numbers I have in my data set, I get six. So that means I'm going to take 163 and I'm going to divide it by my six numbers in my data set, and that gives me 27.16, and the six repeats. Or I could round it to 27 and 17 hundredths. Let's take a look at these two data sets. So when I add this first one up, I come up with a total of 88. And I have 11 numbers, or excuse me, I have eight numbers in my data set. And so I'm going to take 88 divided by eight, and that gets me 11. So my mean is 11 for this data set. In this next data set, again, I'm going to add up all of the numbers. And when I add them up, I get a total of 490. There are 10 numbers in my data set. So I'm going to take 490 divided by 10. That gets me 49. And so my mean for this data is 49. Next one I'm going to look at is the median. The median is the measure of center in which the middle of the data is determined. To find the median, first I'm going to order my data from least to greatest. And when I do that with this data set, I come up with this list. And then the second thing I'm going to do is determine the middle of that data set. 
And I can do that one of two ways. I can either cross off on each side. So I can go from zero, then cross off eight, zero, six, zero, three and a half, zero, three, zero, two, one, and two. But then I'm left with these two numbers in the middle. Or I can take a look and say that there are 14 numbers here. And since the median is the middle, I divide 14 by two and that would give me seven. So I would count in seven numbers here and I would count in this direction, seven numbers here, and I still get these two numbers. So now to, def to figure out the median, since I don't have an actual middle number, because that middle number would be right in between these two, I have to, so if there is not a middle number, then I have to find the mean or the average of those two middle numbers. And again, to do that, I take one plus one and a half, and that gets me to two and a half. And then I take two and a half, and since there are two numbers there, I have to divide by two. And two and a half divided by two is one and 25 hundredths. So my mean, or excuse me, my median for this data set is one and 25 hundredths because it falls between one and one and a half. Let's take a look at these data sets. So again, need to put it in order. So I have my list here, my median. Well, I can cross off and work my way towards the middle. Well, in this case, I have these two numbers and my median is gonna fall right in here between them. And between 200 and 201, I have 200 and a half. My next set of numbers here, or my next data set, put it in order from least to greatest. And in this one, I'm gonna count in. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 numbers. Half of 10 is five. So I'm gonna count in one, two, three, four, five. So there's five numbers in. Here's one, two, three, four, five numbers in. So my median is going to fall right here. Number between five and five, well, that would have to be five. So my median for here would be five. My last data set here, put it in order from least to greatest, and I have this. And again, depending on how I figure out my median, if I cross off, cross off here on each end, kind of, and again, working my way towards the middle. And here I end up with eight and 10 for my middle numbers. And so that means my median is going to fall between those two. Well, what numbers between eight and 10? And that would be nine. So my median for this amount would be nine. Now, let's talk about outliers. Outliers are values that lie outside and is much smaller or larger than most of the other values in the data set. The mean is affected most by outliers. The median is affected a little bit less and the mode really is not affected at all by outliers. So let's take a look at how outliers affect our numbers. So here I have my data set and we'll order it from least to greatest. And when I look at this, again, my outlier is what kind of doesn't fit in my data set. So 93 would be considered my outlier. So let's take a look at the mode, the median, and the mean and how the outlier affects it. So if I figure the mode with the outlier, it looks like 46 shows up the most. So I'm gonna put 46 for my mode because it shows up two times here. My median is I count towards the middle. And when I do that, 
I come up with 41. And then my mean, I add up all of the numbers, and then I divide by however many numbers I have. And when I have that, I have 44 and 4 tenths. So that's with the outlier. Now, let's take and get rid of that outlier. So we're going to pretend that 93 is not a part of that. So now my mode still 46 because I didn't change anything with that. My median, well now I have one number less. And so then instead of my median being here, it's actually going to slide over one. So my median is going to be 38. And then my mean, I'm going to add up all of the numbers again, except for including 93. And that means I would divide by one number less. And so my answer would be 39. So again, you can see that the outlier doesn't really affect the mode. It affects the median a little bit, but it has a much larger effect on the mean. So now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to look at a graph. And I have a dot plot here. And to do this, sometimes it's easier to make a list of your data. So here's my data set from my graph. And when I take a look at my mode, I want to see again which one occurs the most often. So in my graph, I can see that pretty easily because I have a stack of three dots here, which is taller than all of the rest. So I know that my mode is 20. My mode is also could be considered as my peak amount. And then if I want to look at my median, again, I want to cross off towards the middle. And so I work my way in, kind of going back and forth here. And I come up with 17 and 20. For, and I got to figure out what's in between those two. And when I do that, I come up with 18 and a half. And then my mean, I add up all of my data set and then divide by however many numbers I have there. And when I do that, I come up with 17 and 8 tenths. Now I have a histogram here. Now a histogram is a little bit different situation. So my data set, I can't really tell by my histogram because remember, this just says in this range, there are two pieces of data. I don't know where those two pieces of data fall. So for this data set, I'm unable to tell. And if I don't have a data set that I can say anything about or figure out what exactly it is, then I can't figure out my mode, my median, or my mean. I can get an idea, but I can't figure out exactly. So for all of these, I would just write unable to tell. And again, the median, unable to tell. And again, for the mean, unable to tell. And again, that's because of the way the histogram is set up. I don't know exactly where my data points are, so I can't figure out these measures of center for my data.